And also to that point, schools have got to be collaborative. Synthesis works. The story that Christian didn't tell in my own learning in synthesis was that I got, I was hired with a year to plan SLA. I was hired on a Wednesday. Friday afternoon, my boss walks into my little cube area that I had at the school district headquarters and said, I just emailed you a PDF file of the plans for the school. You have a meeting 9 o'clock Monday morning with the architects. Let them know any changes you want. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Let that one resonate for a minute. Sure. Because that's thoughtful planning, right? Now, you have to understand, I was an English teacher in New York City where we would have called this space a classroom for 30. Right? New York City education planning basically means how do you squeeze any space possible? I mean, our hallways are this thin, our classrooms are this big, and you're just, like, okay, great, super. And that was my lens. And I was like, oh God, I have two and a half days. So I fire off this email of panic to Christian. And he and I had been reading each other's blogs for a little while. And I think we'd exchanged like a couple of comments and maybe one email. Hey, we seem to be kindred spirits, yada, blah. And I believe the subject line was something along the lines of, help! And we spent the next three days in this power two-person charrette of faxes and emails and phone calls. And out of that came my ability to walk into that meeting with the language that I needed to talk to the architects. Because for all of you architects in the room, you speak differently. There's nothing wrong with that. But the rest of us are a little confused sometimes. But also in that room were the school district people. And the architects were actually the cool ones. And what's awesome is, is now when, I mean, talk about synthesis, when Christian comes to visit SLA, he sees the results of those conversations every single time. The silly conversation, story story I love to tell from that meeting on the Monday, where I walked in with this very radically different floor plan was on our first floor, we are, we're just this converted office space. The Philadelphia Magazine, when talking about SLA in a story not too long ago, referred to us as um, that the look of the school was one of an underfunded insurance agency. <laughs> and you remember, I mean, we're sitting there reading it, and we were, hey, oh. <laughs> but, so our first floor, um, is uh, this big open space, and you walk right into the cafe. And we don't call it the cafeteria, we call it the cafe. And it's, it's, all, it's really pretty much the only room on the first floor, it's just our cafe space. We don't have the whole floor, we did the whole other floor. But, um, and the original design plan had that cafe recessed, and it had a hallway around it. But the hallway didn't go anywhere. It just served to isolate the cafe and take away all the natural light. Now, we are literally on a busy street corner in Philadelphia. We're on 22nd and Arch Street, a busy center city place. And when I sat down with the architects and the school designers and the school district people, and I said, we're going to blow out this wall. We don't need it. Natural light, da-da-da, language of architecture, you know, blah, blah, blah. The school district person looked at me, and he said, and I heard this tone in their voice so often in that first year, Chris. You can't let the public see kids eat. <laughs> but I had language. Synthesis works. My instincts told me when I looked at those plans that something was wrong, that it was not a humane building yet, that it was not a human building yet. But in three days of, here's my ideas. What about this? And what about that? And what if we created? And what if we did? And what if that did? And how about with this? My ideas were better because of that synthesis. And when you understand that you learn that way, why would you make anyone else learn a different way? How many of you feel that you, that, how many of you work in solitude? How many of you live in solitude? And yet, in so many schools, that's what we do to kids. I think schools have got to be places of incredible passion. 
This is a photo. Um, so the School District of Philadelphia is facing down a $629 million budget deficit this year. That translates to SLA to an almost half a million dollar budget hit, a 13% of our operating budget. And so we did what SLA does. We got on the buses and we went and did something about it. Did it work? <laughs> Not yet. We got more to do and we're just a school. But this is a photo of SLA kids talking to their state senator in Harrisburg. And what we hear all of the time when our kids interact with the world is, wow, they're so, you know, insert your adjective here. Passionate, interesting, eloquent. Our kids have lobbied state senators. They have built biodiesel generators that then were used in South, Central and South America by other schools. Our kids built a solar thermal water heater in their engineering program that got taken by Engineers Without Borders and is now installed at a hospital in Sierra Leone for amputee victims. Our children have interviewed the deputy mayor of Dallas to talk about why he was spending city resources and energy and time trying to get teenagers to pull up their pants. What we say to kids is high school should matter now. The person you are matters now. What you can do, what you can create, what you can change matters now. What if high school wasn't preparation for real life? What if we honored the lives of children and, and said to them, high school is real life, so what will you do with the time? I also think the day's got to make a whole lot more sense. How many people here have ever tried in your adult life to follow a high school student around for a day? Okay, you all have a thought experiment now. Good. Try it. And all of you who are school designers, how have you not? Walk in their footsteps for a day and ask yourselves, was that a human experience? I did it before we started SLA, I went to uh, the oldest magnet school in the country, Central High School in Philadelphia. August, esteemed, they don't even have a principal, they have a president. Um, and he is <laughs> your Royal Highness, Dr. Pavel, lovely to meet you. Um, and I followed their schedule for a day. And then at the end of the day, not only could I not remember the content of first period class, I couldn't even remember what class I had. We have to make the day make more sense. What you see in this photo here is one of my favorite things that happens is we stream our classes. So kids take English and history and science as a cohort and then we have grade-wide essential questions and themes so that way classes are not silos but lenses to answer the same questions. Deep, profound, powerful questions. And in ninth grade we have one of those wonderful ed educational terms, mandatory electives. And, yeah, okay, just checking. But they take a technology infusion class where they learn how to use the laptop as a profound pedagogical tool. They take engineering because we're a science school. They take drama and they take art because one of our core values is presentation. And you have to learn how to present yourself both as a person in the world and with your ideas artistically and aesthetically. And what this is, and this project, is a collaboration between art and science. What you see here is titanium. The kids had to make a graphic representation of an art with all kinds of different pieces manifest in it. The atomic number, yada blah. And what we ended up with was this incredible mosaic and this incredible quilt of uh, an artistic representation of the periodic table. But what you had to do was really dive deep into sort of all the different things that make up an element and why and how and all those different things and then incorporate that into your representation. Kids understood deeply and profoundly when they did that. They had to think critically and, and understand what that element was. And then they had to look at that mosaic and learn. What would happen if we let the day make more sense? What would happen if they integrated? And then, you know, the other thing, and again, I kind of referenced this earlier, what are we really teaching kids? We're teaching them how to think. How many of you can remember a lot of specific content from your high school European history class? Right, one. I knew there's usually at least one. Anybody can tell me, just out of curiosity, how many people can you know, tell me what year the Magna Carta was signed? There it is. Thank you, somebody. Right? But what you hopefully 
<laughs> Either that, or did you Wikipedia, or did you, or did you pull it out and like, Wikipanion, I can get there, I can get there. <laughs> He's gonna move on, come on! Where's my wireless? But hopefully, what a great European history teacher taught you, aside from a slightly ethnocentric view of the world, was the idea of the systems and structures of society. I'm glad somebody left. Was the systems and structures of society that then impact the way our society looks today. And if they taught you those big ideas, then you learned something. 